All right. So, uh, what nail gun should you buy? Um, you should buy all of them. <laughs> that sounds funny, but I'll show you my little nail gun arsenal that's recently been updated to the battery stuff. This is my old pass load. This is a 16 gauge angled finish nailer and it's okay. It gets the job done when we need a 16 gauge. But the main guns that we use are going to be these two DeWalt's right here. And I'll talk about these and the differences between them. Cause I do get a lot of new people who watch my channel and they wanna know why do you have two nail guns why not just use one? Don't they all just shoot nails? Yes, they do. They all do shoot nails. You've got your typical nail gun setup, which is your 18, which is gonna be this one right here. This is the DeWalt brushless 20 volt max uh, battery nailer there. Then you've got your 16. Now we're going down. When I say 18, that's a thinner gauge and then the, as the gauge goes down the nail gets thicker it's to a thicker gauge so that's the 18 that shoots the thinnest nail then the 16 right here is the one that we use and then the 15 which this is the newest the newest addition to the family and i love this thing so let's just talk about real quick why would you have different gauges of different nails and to make my point clear, let me grab a piece of molding. So this is a panel molding that we use right here. And you'll notice at the kind of top mid section of that molding, it gets pretty thin there. And this is the kind of molding I would not shoot anything other than an 18 gauge nail into. Now I'm gonna shoot this molding with both nails. I'm not gonna use the 16 gauge. I'm just gonna show you the 15 and the 18 cause that's extreme. So I'll shoot this through here. And then I'll shoot the 15 gauge and we'll look at the difference in size of that nail. And to be honest with you, this 15 gauge might just rocket through this thing. So put your safety glasses on. Yeah, it's, it's just freaking powerful, the 15 gauge. So let's look at this. This is why you need two nail guns. On your left is the 18 gauge and you'll notice a splinter to the left of it. Then on the right is where a 15 gauge nail should be, but it just freaking blew out of there. So this has a lot more power. Now, you know, I, I got some crap from some people when I did my nail gun video what was it, six months ago when I was on the whole pneumatic system. I had all my rigid guns, hose, compressor, two 50 foot hoses, I'd connect them together on big jobs to make a 100 foot hose. But I got some crap for that because people, I had my air tank up on the highest pressure that the nail gun allowed. And people said, you're just gonna blow through that. You know, there's no point to have it that high. I do like operating at the highest point because if you think about it you're trying you're trying to drive that nail in now obviously with different materials you know thinner boards and stuff like that you would want to turn that down and you can also back off the set the depth set on the nail on the gun itself you can you can back that nail gun off so it doesn't just blow through all the way but on these there's obviously no air compressor no tank these just go full force every time you shoot them and this sucker right here has a pretty decent re recoil. So there's prime example number one, why you would have two nail guns. So we got the 18 on your left and the 15 gauge on your right. And just for the heck of it, let's shoot this pass load. I said I wasn't gonna do this, but let's shoot this pass load in there as well. Give me a second, I'm gonna put the gas in this thing. It takes propane and propane accessories and it give me just a second so this thing takes a battery this was our first hoseless nail gun and we were freaking happy to have this thing with us hopefully there's gas in there we haven't used this thing in a while 
I'm gonna shoot that. But we were happy to have this. Um, I mean, and even now I like the way that this feels. It's a lot lighter than the DeWalt's back there. But this is something I can just hook on my pants like that and walk up a ladder and it doesn't bother me. It's not straining my belt that's holding my pants up. And that gives me two free hands. So say I'm trying to set up a corner and I got it like that. I can just come with this out and shoot like that. So this thing is cool. Um, it's for sale if anybody wants to buy it. <laughs> I'm gonna sell it. So you gotta live in, in Dallas. We gotta meet up and do it that way. But anyways, now let's shoot this 16 in here. These are, I don't know how long these are. We're just gonna go. And that sucker's freaking loud. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a gunshot. You can't hear it on the camera. And I didn't really shoot into that thin part like I did. I'm gonna shoot it right there. Okay. So the second shot that I took was on the thin part of that small molding. And that would be to your right. And the shot to your left was the first shot that's more in the meteor, meteor piece of the molding. So why wouldn't I use this? Okay, the reason I don't like this, I'm not a good salesman. So if you were wanting to buy it, I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about it. And I'm gonna compare it with the 18 gauge because the 18 and the 15 gauge on the DeWalt are the same. Look at the noses on those. The DeWalt to your right has a really narrow tip. Look at the size of that tip on that pass load. You cannot get that thing in really tight moldings in really tight places. Now, with molding work and trim work, there's key areas that you want to shoot into the moldings and key areas that you don't want to shoot. The spot that I just shot in this molding is a place that you do not want to shoot. I just did this for sake of example to show you how these things can rocket through, how that 15 gauge just blew out. But the reason I had to take two shots at this in the first place is because I couldn't get the accurate shot that I wanted with this. So, you know, that's something to think about. I don't like those, those, big, those big noses like that. But look at those tips on those guns. That's amazing. I love these things. I look forward to coming to work with these things. They're just amazing. Just those narrow, even with the 15 gauge, you can just boom, get into any places you want. So let's talk about a little bit about different applications for these nail guns. Now with the 18 gauge, usually what we're using that for is when we're doing trim to trim installs. So let's say I got a Wayne Scott unit laid out and let's say you, you, you guys have seen me put Wayne Scott units, build them with pocket holes outside and bring them in. So let's say, I'm gonna give you an example. Let me grab this board right here. This is actually what we use to, to build our, our Wayne Scott panels is this one by six finger joint pine. So here's what I would do. Let's pretend this is a whole Wayne Scott unit. I would take this in, mark my studs, and this thing right here, this 15 gauge, this is what you want to shoot through your material, through the drywall, into the stud. This has a two and a half inch nail capacity. So here's what I would do. Shoot that, shoot that into the wainscoting. And then at this point, let's say the wainscoting is all installed and I want to install this onto here. This trim to trim, this is what I would call trim to trim. Then I would just take my 18 gauge and shoot that onto that. So I got a 15 attaching to the wall into the stud and then an 18 attaching from my trim into my styles and rails of my wainscoting or my framework, whatever you want to call it. Now the 18 gauge, I mean the 16 gauge pass load, it doesn't really fit into our work, the way that we work. So that's why I'm selling it kind of, I just, I just don't want to, I just don't use a lot of 16 gauge. And I, for some reason, the nails are really hard to find. You got to order them and you know, pass load, their proprietary nail that they have that only fits their gun. They've got loads of that at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's, but 
you know, if you want to get the DeWalt 16 gauge nailer, it's hard to find nails for that, at least here where I am. I don't know why it's set up like that. But that's a little bit about nail guns, you know, different, different applications. So let me grab, I got a piece of crown over here, scrap that we were using today. Now with this, you know, this crown right here, look at the profile on that crown. There's thinner parts of it and there's thicker parts of it. So you might be saying, well, what do you do? What, which nail gun do you use? Honestly, it just depends on what you're doing. Like, let's say I was gonna put this on a kitchen cabinet. Kitchen cabinet, I'm gonna put crown molding on a kitchen cabinet. Then what I would do is I would take this 18 gauge and look at the bottom of that molding, how it steps down. And then I'm gonna shoot into that. See how that nail is grabbing in the meat of that crown? Then look, if you step up here to the next step of this detail, let's say I'm gonna shoot this into the wall now. I'm gonna go through drywall, through drywall, through this crown, through drywall, into the stud. Then I would choose the meteor piece of this molding and you can see right there oh that thing actually didn't even drive here let me shoot it again I was kind of this is kind of awkward shooting a nail gun while holding this so let me show you what what I mean by it didn't even drive I wasn't holding the piece accurately with enough force and that first shot I took it didn't even send the nail beyond the hole but if that happened we would just take a nail set and pop that through if that happened in a real actual scenario but the second shot that I took it made it all the way through and drove it home and it actually made it pretty far because there's no resistance on the other side there's no drywall and stud to kind of stop that force of that nail so with this molding you could do 18 or 15 or 16 there's really no right or wrong way to do it if you're worried about you know, is it gonna be strong enough? Then just go with a bigger gauge. But this whole thing of which nail gun should I buy? I would never tell you to buy one nail gun. I have not operated with one nail gun since day one. We've always had an 18 and a 15, and the 16 was kind of an experiment and we don't use it much. So what nail gun should you buy? Buy the nail gun that fits the application for what you're doing. I'll talk about the ramp up time between these. These have a, I better do it with this one so it doesn't just shoot the neighbor's house over there. These have uh, bump fire features. So you just bump it up against it and then it'll shoot. So here we go, I'll just do this. So that was a big plus when I found out about that, especially coming from the pass load. I mean, this thing, honestly, it just feels like I've got a compressor on the end of it. But with this, you don't get that option. You just, it has to ramp up each fire. So I'll hold the trigger. So you can see how that's gonna slow you down. Cause you don't, you know, you wanna be able to work quicker and you know, it's just, this thing is just, inefficient in my opinion but whoever wants it i'll sell it to you i keep some various nail sizes in here this is a little organizer that i keep so i'm going to have my 18 gauge over here these i'll usually have anywhere from these little 5 8 inch nails we use these pretty often when we're attaching really small moldings or if we're attaching like we want to anchor a crown into a shelf top and we don't want it to come through the top of the crown and then these two inch nails and then uh, my 15 gauge are going to be angled so these are the angled nails right here and from these i keep about an inch and a half to two and a half inches that's pretty much what i keep in this and then pocket hole screws and all that other stuff that's in here. Trim head screws. I don't know if anybody knows about these. These are pretty cool. 
Uh, if y'all want me to make a video about trim head screws, just let me know and I can do that as well. And then kind of over here, I just have just nails that kind of have fallen off the full rack and I keep those there for emergencies. Like let's say I need a one inch nail, I can dig through there. Cause I, I just don't want to throw those away. I don't feel good about throwing them away, but they are kind of annoying to have. So that's it. That's the rundown on nail guns. My suggestion to you is go with 15 or 18. If you want to do 16, if that fits better with your work style, by all means, grab yourself a 16 and start firing away. But for us, this is what we like to use. But that's what we use right there, an 18 and a 15. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you learned something about nail guns. Hopefully you learned something about where to shoot the moldings when you're installing them, as far as where you're gonna point that nail gun. I like these, um, these nail guns because they have a really narrow nose. You can get them into tight spaces. They're very reliable and they're not heavy. They, they feel fine. I could hold this thing all day. Granted, this has a six amp hour battery. I normally wouldn't have this on here. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it. Thanks so much for watching. We will see y'all on the next video. Take care.